thank you very much. Thank you for, for coming out and all the awesome speakers before as well. Uh, I'm going to speak. Uh, I'm, I work, I'm, my name is Niklas Kaiser and I work at the Swedish CERT but that belongs to MSP or the Swedish Contingency Agency. So if you have any questions, sort of broader garden, government stuff as well, you know, please shoot them up here as well and I try to do my best answering them. But actually, before I got started with my, my talk, it's called Skate Apocalypse Now. And I actually didn't know the dining talk was going to be Somber Survival, so kind of, I was a bit lucky there. Uh, it kind of correlates. Uh, but before I, I start my talk, actually, I, uh, last year I had a, a quite severe knee injury. So last year during the conference, I had one, my first surgery out of two. And my doctor told me it would take roughly one year to recover. So while you were enjoying the conference last year, I was home with a big bandage just watching TV. And I imagine, like, I want to fast forward one year to next year's CS3. So finally here, which, you know, makes it kind of cool for me. And also before starting, I was just want to say to Eric, who is a huge inspiration for me, because I was actually an automation engineer before starting this field. And I read an article in this paper called Automation 11 years ago written by Eric, and that sort of completely changed my career from being an automation engineer to doing the stuff I do now, because, you know, I was doing all the stupid stuff <laughs> we were complaining about, and then I, I kind of, yeah, hacking is kind of cool, and then onwards I went. So thank you, Eric, and through Eric I also met, uh, had the pleasure to meet Robert later on, and, and Sissy, his wife, and I would say, like, so awesome that they do this conference, so Thank you so much for being so awesome and doing this conference. It's a true pleasure. Anyway, my talk is going to be about uh, sort of industrial 4.0. So I'm going to, I feel we haven't really talked about this and what implication that will have to our sector. And um, so I first going to do like a little bit of presentation what I think industrial 4.0 is. And after that, uh, I will do some ranting and then uh, and do some, you know, some, some easy, easy piece of hacking, but sort of combining my, my sort of previous uh, experience as an automation engineer with my, what I do now at working at the CERT. I combine my time doing ICS stuff, but I also do ordinary IT security stuff, like changing abuse and password dumps and that kind of stuff. And sort of trying to combine, let's see what's, what's, uh, what's ahead of the uh, curve in, in Industrial 4.0 and those, the attacks we see today how can they probably be implemented uh, uh, in the industrial sector? So, quickly about me, what's, what uh, was just said. So, just to get a perspective. But sort of, if we move on to what, what I think industrial 4.0 is, if I do very simplify it, it's, it's sort of, I combine it in three buckets. It's sort of, it's how to collect data, how to store data, and how to process data. And when I say that, uh, I'm going to kind of, you know, walk you through this a bit, what I, th what I define and then these three different categories in, in um, technology-wise. If you look at this one, this, you know, you might recognize that's the Purdue medal all over ISA 95, where we have the sensors in the bottom and then we have the PLCs upwards and, and so on and so forth. That's sort of how, how it's built today, roughly. But uh, I've taken this picture from, from IBM. This is sort of the Purdue model collapsed. This is sort of, this is the future. And uh, where we see like uh, the, the sensors is talking to the cloud, which is talking to a SAP system that's located somewhere else. So we have the logistics system, we have some kind of router, but it's, everything is a big mash, more or less. So data will flow through the whole Purdue model, everybody's talking to everybody. And if you were down in, uh, at, at, the, at the ICS um, uh, CTF yesterday, Jonathan talked about sort of to watch out for uh, the 5G. So that's sort of what's going to happen, 5G. And we have the IPv6 stuff rushing into sort of, to that sort of that will make this possible. And as you see here, we have PLCs talking directly to the cloud with the OPC UA, which, which you know, that's, that's the future to come. And uh, when, we, when we talk about how to store data, it's, everything is going to be cloud. Cloud 
sort of its infrastructure, storage, uh, CPUs, so on and so forth. Uh, and what sort of what implication did that have? And also how to process data. That's like where the money is. Uh, this is sort of a collection of all the different sort of ways you can process data. But so one one big feature is the analytics. You want to reach uh, where you kind of almost like predict or prescribe. We need to. Uh, uh, what do we need for kind of maintenance? Uh, how is the energy cycle going to be? How is the logistics going to be towards to the to, uh, to the production? So on and so forth. So like all this combined, I have sort of stolen this picture. Sort of the factory of the future. So this is what we're going to need to defend. And uh, if you look here, we have blockchain enterprise resource planning and supply chain management. So we're going to talk directly from, from the plant up to, to, uh, uh, to the supply chain uh, system. We have predictive mach machine analysts, which we probably you, you need to ramp up into the clouds because we need CPU power up and down. Uh, we have uh, IoT sensors that communicate to our, to our logistics systems. We have uh, sort of wearables. We have uh, AVG. We have uh, computer vision. So we're going to throw more or less industry 4.0, we're going to throw like all technology at the same time for the reason to make money. So this is the muscle of hierarchy for IoT. And this is, so the, this is the, where the business people see. Uh, we are kind of down here. Uh, and if you see value, everything, everything is... Uh, uh, so everything as a service. And if you put us to, to the economy, they, they have this upward triangle. You're going to make much of money if you go full on to, 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 to the cloud or to industrial 4.0. And just sort of one example is that uh, this predicted that the German industry will invest roughly 10 million euros for the next 10 billion euros for the next 10 years in um, industrial 4.0 investments. So everybody want to get on this ride because it's a lot of, lot of money to make. And I would say one of the big challenges is it's kind of easy to, uh, to put in new technology. This is my son, uh, Antonio. He loves robots. Uh, he's a three and a half on this picture. This is a Lego Boost robot. And at the age of three and a half, he learned how to program this robot. I thought it was kind of cool, like being so young and learn how. But I, you know, he's a clever boy. But I mean, I would say it's the more the technology that enhances this sort of technology. Advanced technology is becoming so easy that even a three and a half year old can program it. Uh, and if sort of imply it to to our stuff, have you ever tried Amazon EBS? Uh, uh, if you look on the dashboard, there's loads of analytics there, so it's actually quite easy to do really advanced math without sort of some security to it. So it's very tempting to use this technology uh, because you can do so much stuff with it, but uh, the risks, you don't really, really realize them. Um, just a side note, I just want to say, my, my son loves robots, and at the Technischem Museum, the ones who don't, don't live in Stockholm, I really recommend you to, to, to go there and see the exhibition of robots. Put aside. But sort of, when we connect everything, uh, there's a, what, what, what sort of, the, what do I see as the big, big risks? I took this from, from, uh, from uh, Wikipedia. So sort of we lowered the bar for an attack. So we traditionally say uh, that there's a high, very high impact, but there's a very low risk that we will have an attack on ICS system. But when everything's become connected, I would say it's a very high risk combined with a very high effect. So have you seen this risk matrix? I think we're going to move up, up to the right corner. And uh, stuff that sort of we have already seen happening to Hydra, I think, it, Unfortunately, that's just the beginning. And uh, OWASP, they do a, 
do this thing called the, the, the IoT top 10 of, of, of stuff, and I think it applies very well for, for, for industrial control systems as well. And now we're going to move on to the, to the RAM thing, because I'm going to misuse some of this stuff from like small sheep hacks I've done just to prove, to prove some points. Uh, but sort of one of the things I see like the, the big, big sort of risks is that, yeah, we're going to connect everything, and I think we're going to crash and burn quite a lot right now. So I think all of in, in this room together, we don't really need to worry about, about our sort of what we're going to do for the next 10 years. I think our jobs are secure. Uh, sort of one, one of the things when we start connecting stuff is that uh, we have old system. Uh, I think I saw a CyberX being here. Uh, somewhere, and uh, they have done a, they do a really cool study where they see like how many um, uh, old systems are are installed. So through their uh, all their assessments, they have seen 53 percent of all the systems have uh, outdated operation system. And I actually looking really looking forward to see next year what's going to happen because 14th of January next year. Windows Server 2008 and Windows 7 will have end of life. You can buy extended support. But um, I've taken this sort of, I did look at in August, Windows 7 was roughly 35% still installed. And if you look in the industrial control system, my guess is the double, at least 70%. Uh, so I wonder what that figure will be next year. Probably 80, 90% I'm, I'm afraid of. But if we move on a little bit sort of to, to, the, to the hacking and, and that kind of stuff. This I took from HMS. And uh, I had a quite interesting discussion yesterday at the dinner with, uh, with Monta, the, the talker before. Sort of, uh, do you notice anything about all these protocols? This sort of, this is the uh, sort of distribution of protocols used uh, in industrial facilities through their uh, sort of assessments. Do you notice anything about this? There's all the protocols are without authentication and encryption, of course. And my discussion with Monta yesterday was, do you consider CANBUS to be a vulnerability? And I thought it was a kind of interesting question. I haven't really decided yet, so I'm ho hopefully I will see him next year and I have an answer because, yeah, it's sort of, Anything can manipulate everything, which kind of makes it interesting. But if we move on to the, the, the hacking stuff, does anyone recognize what is this? You can scream out if you see it. No? It is, uh, this is a program called Shelter, and the other one is a program called Lord PI. I was like, okay, if I go back, this, this is uh, all the protocols. But then I did like a study how, how sort of different OPC tunnelers, uh, other protocol converters, I, I tested about s seven or eight of them. How many of them can I backdoor? So they communicate with the PLCs, but sort of how many of them can I backdoor? Uh, have, do you have any guess? All of them, of course. And I saw, I saw yesterday uh, a quite interesting uh, talk when they said uh, security is not witchcraft. So if you try this one, Shelter, uh, that's, that's almost like witchcraft. You put an EXE into it, you decide what kind of backdoor you want, and it gives you a backdoor program. For me, that's almost like witchcraft. Uh, and if you want to go a little bit in, more into depth, I have tried with this one as well, Lord PE. You can actually go into the, the different fields of the EXE and then see if there's some uh, free space where you can put in your code. So I did it as well, like put in one of, the, one of the OPC tunnels, I put in some, some, some backdoor, and it, of course it works. And why, why, why do I stress this one? Because if we start going to connect stuff, we need to know that the stuff we are uh, communicating with is, is valid. And if you think about the attack we had with Havex, for instance, uh, and to my knowledge, I have only seen one vendor that do hash sums for, for, their, uh, for the programs. So that's like one message I have. I'm going to come in the end, sort of 
please start doing hash sums for, for the stuff you do. So you can't back, well, you can backdoor them, but then it's, there's a chance to detect it. If we move on to the next little sheep hack. Uh, not right now, it's not much IPv6 on the ICS, but I tried a little bit on the, on the, on the IoT stuff. And uh, this is a framework called the Hacker's Choice. And there's a bunch of different, yeah, sorry for the res resolution, it's a bu bunch of, of different attacks you can do. For instance, you can, you can uh, add fake IPv6 address, which you will flood the memory of the, of the device. And of course this works. And when we start putting, what a big fear of mine is because when, when we start putting IPv6 into the ICS stuff, I think the stack will be broken to start with. So it will also be a lot of crash and burn. Uh, another sort of, this is sort of a, I apologize to start with because I guess there's some German friends here. Yeah. Uh, but th there's a point to this, so, so bear with me. Don't be angry until I finish. Um, there's a, there's a web page called um, platform i40.de, which is the, the main site for, for collaboration of Industrial 4.0 stuff. Uh, and uh, one of the attacks we see really often right now at, at the CERT is fake web pages. For instance, they, they, they pretend to be uh, a lot of Office 365 pages, sort of, they, they, they pretend to be universities, uh, web mail, and stuff like that. And usually they, they forge the, the URL, so it will be some, something similar or something in the line of, of uh, what is, and this is actually the main, main German uh, site for Industrial 4.0. So I had a look at this, and to my surprise, I discovered that .com was free. So I bought that one. So this is my page right now. Uh, I, I will give it away to the, to the, uh, to, to the German uh, economy and research if they want. Uh, but sort of, it was not, I mean, now I'm beating on the Germans, but sort of, we have a, have a similar one uh, called Smart Industry as well. And I, I bought the one, that one as well, that com. Uh, the thing is not my fun of these ones, but sort of, we see these attacks a lot. And another way we see attacks, so I actually, I looked at my own site then, I have, because I, I own the platform, i40.com. Uh, and this is the, what the, uh, all these sites, what's sort of also available, that sort of GoDaddy gave me as a suggestion. So I can buy them as well and do a fake platform site. And why, why is this sort of valid? Because when we're going to do the, the predictive maintenance and we're going to connect it to the cloud, it will be through some kind of web page. And if we get sort of fake values into the sites, there will be... The attack vector becomes so big. And if we do even more crazy stuff, uh, if you try this, sort of, it's, it generates, you can put in a website and it generates loads of, of other URLs. Uh, all these 375 ones were sort of free as well because they're just typos and stuff like that. Uh, and we see this a lot at, at, uh, at, at the search. Like, uh, this is the very common way to get in. And um, <clears throat> another sort of feature is that we are getting web servers in everything. We're getting web servers in the PLCs, we're getting web servers in the communication cards, and we're really bad at patching the OS, and we're really bad at patching the, the, the firmware. And uh, web servers have a tendency to go end of life as well. For instance, the PHP is still quite common. Uh, the five point, uh, the version five is still quite um, common on the internet, and it's out of out of uh, out of service. And if we start putting this in uh, industrial control systems and connect them as well, we have sort of we have really increased the attack surface, which makes me a bit afraid. And if you remember the the urgent. 11, uh, 
there were, of course, there were web server attacks, and they had 10.0, if I remember correctly. Yeah, of course. So full compromised remote execution. But sort of, uh, though, we're gonna, we want to store our, our data in, in, in the cloud because we want to optimize our systems. Uh, we're going to use some kind of databases. For instance, we want to use MongoDB or we're going to use uh, Elasticsearch. The bad guys have figured this out as well. They, they search the internet and they start uh, ransomwareing them or using them for DDoS. And this is where we're going to store all our data. Which also made me a bit, bit afraid that all the production data will be encrypted because it's stored somewhere else in this kind of uh, techniques. Um, does anyone know what is this? Yes, shout it out. Exactly, yeah, it's, it's like a, I remember the brand, it was a Fitbit that they sort of collected heat maps where people were, were running. Strava, thank you, thank you. And this is the, in the desert of Afghanistan, so it's kind of easy to see where, where, where I should have, where is the military base located? And also, I think this really applies to, to industrial control systems as well, because one of the main things right now, we're going to start pushing out uh, sensors and collect them. We're going to do smart meters, we're going to do smart uh, uh, water, uh, what's it called? How much water we use, and sort of we're going to collect it and sort of have this idea that data want to be free. And the aggregated data itself also might be a very, very interesting attack vector, which I don't think, I don't, I don't think anybody thought about this. this. This sort of could be an attack vector when they did it like a Fitbit. And uh, I think we're going to see the same stuff with our, with our things as well. So, but also, you know, we, we're going to start putting stuff in the cloud. And... Uh, the cloud is not sort of perfect either. We have had several, several. We have had to handle them at the start. Several outages of, of both Cloudflare and uh, and uh, of Amazon Web Services, and also like we, we are going to start to get this kind of more uh, dependencies we don't really can really think about as well. Uh, so uh, that sort of is going to get so complicated, and I was sort of. When we speak about uh, dependencies, when, when you work in an in a electrical production facility, for instance, we talk about island mode. And I think we start, start to prepare for island mode as well, sort of in an ICS way, sort of how do we disconnect everything from the ICS without disrupting the services? Because I think we're going to be so dependent on this stuff uh, so that... Uh, uh, once they, they go down, we're going to see some weird stuff happening. And uh, that sort of makes me a little bit afraid. Sorry about my voice. I lost it yesterday. Uh, but let's say now, okay, now I've been ranting. What should we do? Sort of thoughts about improvement instead. Uh, we have ISC 62243. Uh, we need to start doing that with the island mode, for instance. And I, I, need, I think we need to do segmentation also on like on the, on the down to the sensors, because if they're going to start talking to the internet, we will, it will be kind of difficult. Um, also, my, my ranting about the, the you know, backdooring stuff, we need to start adding checksums for everything. So that's sort of a... a, sort of a I hope that the vendors here see this and go home and put out MD5 sums for all their stuff on the homepage. Software, firmware, programs. I haven't started with the backdooring firmware yet, but I think I'm playing around with it. I haven't succeeded yet, so maybe a further talk, I don't know. Uh, and also, I will also, you know, if we start with codes, uh, with, with uh, hash sums, next step will be code signing. That would also be great to verify that, especially if we start going to download stuff into the PLCs and so on. It would be really cool if they would code sign it. I've, I've heard that someone is doing it, but I haven't seen it. So, uh, Also, one thing I would really, really like to see is uh, bug bounties. I, I know there has been like a little bit sort of uh, talks about it, but I know, for instance, Tesla does it. 
So I think it would be cool if all the big ICS vendors had a bug bounty program. So researchers could uh, put the stuff uh, in a legal way. And also, to be honest, there has not been like a lack of vulnerabilities within the ICS. And if we're going to start connecting it, we need to be honest, there will be lots of vulnerabilities and we need to shake them out before connecting them. So I, I, would, I, would, I would say this is a clever way to go forward. Uh, I will, though, I will also give a big hand to, to the German uh, BSI. They did really cool stuff for, 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 uh, for, for the Triton. Uh, they did a, like, more like a white listening for, for, uh, for Traconics, how they should communicate. I thought it was a really clever idea. And also that was sort of a call out to all the vendors because you know how your protocols looks like. If you could start doing white listening ideas, sort of, because our environments are very static. We know exactly how they're going to talk to each other. And the vendors know the protocols. So that, I think that would be really, really cool stuff to, to, to do that. Also, one thing is we have, we have the FAT and the SAT usually within, uh, within our community, but also should be, I would like to see vulnerability assessments and, and penetration tests included in that because that's, sort of, that's the sweet spot we have to test the stuff before it goes into production. And I would like to see that as implemented in all industrial standards as well. Like that should be like a part of whatever kind of industry you belong to. Uh, we do some stuff at CERT SC, uh, just to mention. I mean, we, we are, we are lacking behind, it, it takes time, but we are working in the, also a big thanks for the Austrian Energy CERT here, because uh, they put out this short, short on dork list, and uh, I have started a collaboration with the, with the biggest ISPs here in Sweden to start reaching out, because the problem as a CERT, we don't know who owns the IP address in most of the cases. So we need to collaborate with ISPs. So we will hand them a. I will. I have actually done a script that goes through all the, all the all the showdown dorks for for Sweden and then sort of enumerate to which ISPs they belong to. So now we are actually preparing a quite big campaign where we're going to try to reach out to all this connected stuff. So I was hoping that will be done to uh, about a starter before coming here, but administration takes more time, so the technical stuff is already done, but then, then the administration we need to do, that sort of takes a bit of time. But hopefully before the end of the year, we will have gone out with this. And then we will do it as, I don't know, twice a year or something, we will do this over and over again. And if there's anyone here that do, do this, this you know, showdown surfing, uh, find stuff in Sweden, and you, you find something vulnerable, please contact us at CERT. Uh, we, we have done, dealt with this uh, previously, so we, I will gladly continue to do this. So that's like a call out to the community. Uh, we have also talked about, uh, probably gonna do like a workshop where we're gonna, how to implement uh, network security monitoring within control system. And, uh, and uh, as it looks now, it's going to be for free, and it's going to be aimed to, to, to people who own uh, uh, facilities and uh, consultants, because we see we, we need to push, push this out. And, uh, and uh, so it'll be like a two-day workshop how to implement uh, Security Onion within the industrial control system. And, um, and also, my hopefully, we will start to create a community that will do whitelisting for, for, for IDS rules for, for different control systems. That's my uh, idea. And then, for instance, you can go Eric's uh, course and to, to dig, dig deeper even in the, in the, in the PCAPs. Uh, before we, we step into the questions, I have actually a little challenge for you. I don't know if has anyone noticed anything in my slides. I was hoping to have a goodie bag, but you know, I work for the government, so I didn't manage to get one. But there's this. There's very good, very good. I will buy you beer afterwards. Perfect, perfect. It is. All, all the, all the, many of the headlines came from, from Nine Inch Nails to Fred Ryle. Um, why did I choose this? They actually released this album 20 years ago, which is kind of cool, I thought. But it was in September, and this is October, so. Two, 20 years plus one month. 
And the, the title is called The Fragile. And I think that sort of suits very well to our system because we need to protect fragile system. And uh, I thought it f f uh, fitted the theme very, very much. And also, if you thought about what kind of uh, song I did choose for, for the intro, is one called We're in this together now. And Industrial 4.0 is going to happen whatever we want it or not. Uh, we're going to have shitloads of connected devices to our control system. And I think we, in this room, we need to, we're in this together now. So we are the ones who need to solve it. And there's a lot of clever people here. So it's going to be a lot of crash and burn. It's going to be a lot of hard work for us the next decade or two. But hopefully, you know, we, we can manage. And because, um, yeah, there, there's, I think the attack surface is increasing. And uh, I think that the, the bad guys are especially finding a way to monetize this. And that's, that makes me a bit afraid and sort of uh, aches, my, sort of my belly aches a little bit. But, you know, seeing all the people here, all the clever people here, I think there's a, we can, you know, we can take on the fight. So thank you very much. And uh, I'm glad to answer any questions if there are any one. And I will be around as well if you have, you know, want to talk to, to me as, you know, as a start SC person. Thank you. Well, thank you, Niklas. There, there are all questions, so yep. you better take a seat. Yeah, okay, thank you. So, um, interesting talk, interesting views on the future. A little dark, but anyway. Hopefully realistic, or so, I hope I'm wrong, though. Yes, so, so uh, the most up upvoted question right now is, uh, if, um, if you have any recommendations to vendors that fail to make sure that they are not delivering malware with their deliveries? Well, uh, employ uh, uh, sort of, sort of a IT security people that can look into this. Uh, I think that's, you know, check, check the checksums for, for virus total, but you, know, you need skilled people. I think that's the... So, the, I mean, the, the answer is pretty simple. They need to may, make this part of their product uh, or in pro project processes. I definitely, mean, yeah, definitely, yeah. It has to be part of it. So, I mean, it's, it's not acceptable to have malware delivered with your system that well, you I mean, bought for 40 cause million. Because we, we are dealing with the most sensitive systems of them all. Sort of if, so, definitely, yeah, it, it needs to be said, taken seriously. So, and it, I guess the same goes for, I mean, the, we have seen and talked about the attacks on sub suppliers uh, and the supply chain goes for the vendors as well. I mean, they, they need to start protecting themselves as well for... Definitely, yeah. 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 So, as a security expert, can you expand on specific risks that will, be, that will need to be addressed when moving to cloud SCADA or cloud PLC models? I mean, I would, I would say the dependencies sort of that the production sort of should not depend on the connectivity uh, and try it out before moving out and try it regularly uh, if we just talk cloud, but also make sure you're not leakage data, sort of the open Amazon web services buckets, for instance, that's we see on a very regular basis. Okay, so, so uh, you're t said talking about the availability and, and data loss. Yeah. Um, uh, are there any other aspects that you would? Uh, well, uh, if I'm a bit frank, you know, don't go to the cloud, but sort of... <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's good advice. Yeah. So, what is the worst attack you've seen or heard of in Sweden? Uh, that you can talk about? Control system-wise or in general? Um, well, both. I mean, it's ransomware. You know, it's ransomware. big components get hit by ransomware. In but both places? Yes. So, the, those are the worst. And what happens uh. then? Full compromise system. You can't, you know, you can't, uh, you can't do business. Uh, you need to run on manual mode. Uh, that kind of stuff. So, but uh, if if we're talking about Sweden, yeah. uh, why haven't we seen any of that in the news? Um, I mean, as, as 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 a start, we are not allowed to sort of give out who calls us, which right. sort of for the full respect of them. And and uh, I hope. But Hydro did here should, should shine us in a bright example how we should do it. But sort of that's, I can just encourage asset owners to, to go the same route as they do. So that's what, and that's what we try to, to, to advise companies to be, to be open about compromises. Right. 
Okay, so the, here's the more technical questions. If, if the hacker has access to backdoor the program, uh, aren't they also able to modify the checksum? Uh, depends. I mean, uh, if it's already installed, I mean, it's, if they have hacked the, 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 the provider itself, they can ch change the, ha the, the hash sum. But for me, for instance, just downloading the program, backdooring it, and then sending it out, then the, the, there will be a different hash sum. So. So, yes, yeah, depending on where you, you compromise. Right. But uh, in, I mean, if you could prefer a, a future scenario, a keyed kind of integrity would be better. Yeah, than yeah. code signing would you know, definitely raise the bar. I mean, it's not impossible, but it would definitely raise the bar. Great. So, uh, if the purging module isn't uh, suitable for IIoT, are there any other standard models for IIoT? Uh, well, well, well it's, a, it's a collapsing system, so... But hopefully, we'd, we'd, we need to think about choke, choke points here as well, sort of how, how to pull data through just sort of choke points where we can surveil the data and also control it and, and shut it down if we need. And segment, as I said, like we need to segment stuff. But yeah, there's no like defined standard yet, to my knowledge. Right. Okay. So uh, here's another question. If someone wants to attack the military base, wouldn't it be quite easy to simply do site surveillance instead? Uh, I don't attack <laughs> military <laughs> bases, but so I, I guess so. I don't know. <laughs> right, yeah, that, that was just an example of, of aggregated data. It was not sort of targeted towards the military. Right. Uh, yes, and, and not the, it's a good example of how data can be misused. Exactly, you, exactly. You couldn't think of before. Uh, so have you tried to, to test and break OPC UA? And if you have, what was your experience? Uh, no, I haven't tested. That's on my list to try. Okay, yeah. so that's on your wish list. But uh, are there protocols then, than OPC UA? I mean, to, 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 to uh, manipulate the protocols. I mean, Modbus, that's super easy, for instance. Sure. Uh, uh, Profinet, you can do uh, depend, different S, S7.com, you can manipulate it as well, sort of. But have you seen any OPC UA implementations where uh, there has been a failure of actually protecting it as they should? Only like using no, I mean, it's not that's widely implemented yet, but I've right. seen. But... Uh, but uh, I mean, if we look at the mechanism you use, uh, that the OPC UA uses, it's the certificate yeah. based, yeah. X509. But um, in many places, that is actually used to protect the communication, in, uh, also if you look at the standards. But have you seen places where they've successfully implemented a PKI to, to support that, or is no, it self signed certificates? No, I haven't seen it, but there might be. So if right. someone has succeeded, please tell me. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think that we need that kind of good Definitely. I, references. I, I agree as well. I agree yeah, as well. Stop using self-signed certificates. Uh, so here's another question on, on uh, MD5 checksums. Uh, it's a good, um, good mechanism, but how do we get people to really check them? Uh, well, <laughs> it should be part of the, the sort of implementation that should, should verify it that your your program is correct. Yeah, so it should be uh, just a part of your daily routine. I mean, well, not, well not daily routine, but every time you do some kind of update or some kind of if you download a program, Change. you should yes. always check it. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Like a checklist. Right. So and there are two news here actually. Let's see. Um, right. Uh, are the real production SCADA connected to the cloud, to your knowledge? Sorry? Are the real production um, SCADA systems? Yes, I've seen it. In the cloud? Uh, well, uh, more like the, yeah, the SCADA HMI stuff I've seen in the, in the cloud. cloud but not, not the SCADA service as such? Uh, that I haven't seen. I only okay. see HMIs. And process communication? Uh, yes, I've seen it as well. Scary. All right, so this... I have some technical issues here, so it doesn't play well right now. <laughs> Bear with me. Next question is coming up. Uh, so what is the future of ICS uh, security for the next decade? Uh, well, as I said, uh, probably going to be a bumpy ride because, I mean, there's so much gain from Industrial 4.0 as well. Maybe I didn't push that hard enough because there's be money to make. It's going to be, you're going to save energy. The production line is going to be much more slim. The logistics will be more efficient. So the sort of the, the benefits of jumping on the train is the financial gains are so high. Uh, but also, if you don't really think, there will be a bumpy, bumpy ride. So I think there will be a lot of crash and burns. And I, I fortunately, I think there will be much more hydro cases. 
Sure. But uh, if you if think about the po potential security controls or architectures, I mean, yeah. um, would it make sense to see advancements in, in um, protecting s s single objects or single activities? Like, instead of a session control, you have an actual action control or command. Or I mean, yeah, the, I mean that's, that's a, a sort of a trade-off as well, like if you... If you because we have av availability as well to take into concern. But sort of, for instance, like the, the I've seen like, for instance, uh, Seek are putting out uh, uh, new parsers for, for uh, S7 and for a bunch of more industrial control system. I think that's cool. Uh, I, I hopefully that the vendor would do release more like stuff for, for free or for, you know, to be cheap. So it should be, it shouldn't be like a huge investment to, it, to, to go into security. For instance, the IDS rules, they should be, for, for instance, for free. Okay. All right, then. Thank you very much. Thank you.